the Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, the enemy, our mutual enemy is Biden. Well, this video has gotten out and is causing quite the commotion within the RFK Jr. campaign for president. So RFK Jr., of course, is running as an independent, currently pulling at around 12%. And some people have wondered, what is even the point of this campaign if clearly he can't win? Not necessarily because he's polling at 12%, but more so because of the way the system works with First Past the Post and the Electoral College. He can't win as an independent in this current system. But uh, Rita Palma here, who is Kennedy's campaign New York director, sort of just let it all out. <laughs> it just but it's very clear with her intentions that she wants Trump to win. And she is working with RFK to get Trump to win. So I'm going to play this video for you and uh, I'll go over some of the strategy here and some of the reaction from the Kennedy campaign because they aren't too happy about this getting out. So there's no Biden voters in the House, right? No. OK, good. <laughs> Things, I guess, will change over time because you do have to only pick one candidate at the end of the day. But the Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, the enemy, our mutual enemy is Biden. Since Biden is... Just going to pause there. You heard it there. <laughs> the mutual enemy of the Trump voter and the RFK voter or the Bobby voter is Joe Biden. It's very clear. And she lays out the strategy now. Counting on us with Bobby in the mix. My, my thought is for the Republicans. See, Bobby right now, he's pulling from both sides. Right now, he's actually pulling a little bit more from Biden, which explains why the DNC is kind of ganging up on him. They have a special committee to go after independent candidates. Yeah, they say independent candidates, like non-affiliated candidates, they really mean Bobby, because Bobby's the only third party that anybody's taking seriously. So they developed a committee just to go after him and to get him off of the ballot in any way they can, especially it seems as though they're going after the battleground states more than the deep blue states. Bobby's moving the blues on his own. If the Republicans has accepted the fact that New York, Maryland, Chicago, uh, Illinois, California, New Jersey, Connecticut, most of the Northeast is going to go blue, why wouldn't we put our vote to Bobby and at least get rid of Biden and get those 28 electoral votes in New York? The card's a little wrong. It says 26 electoral votes. Give those 28 electoral votes to Bobby rather than to Biden, thereby uh, reducing Biden's 270. And we all know how that works, right? All right, so I'll, I'll finish whatever's left of this video in a second here, but let's, let's go over this strategy. Because I, I'm, I, I appreciate the fact that Rita Palma recognizes that Bobby <laughs> can't become president in the current system. But this strategy here to try and get by, get Trump to win is just a little hazy to me. So she says here, if Republican voters accept the fact, or, should, or I guess, I guess, yeah, voters accept the fact that New York, Maryland, all these blue states, uh, most of the Northeast is going blue, why wouldn't we put our vote to Bobby and at least get rid of Biden? Give those 28 electoral votes in New York to Bobby rather than Biden. What, what, what's weird to me about this strategy, and look, it's her job to get votes to RFK, of course, so she's going to make this kind of attempt to do that. But the, if your whole point, if the whole ultimate point here is to get Trump to win, which it is, I'll finish the video, then why not just get the Bobby voters to vote for Trump? Yeah, and by the way, even if that were, ha were to happen... Trump is not still not going to win, you know, New York state. Like the, some of these states are just California. Like the, <laughs> this, this attempt here to like, th this is where a lot of this gets, gets messed up is this assumption that this, these no affiliation voters at 23%, that they're all voters for Bobby Kennedy. When that's not, they're not voting for RFK. The, the, this isn't, I don't, you, you can't assume every single voter who is not a Democrat or Republican is now is now a RFK voter. That's insane. So but yeah, in this scenario, sure, if every single non-affiliated voter and every single Republican voted for Donald Trump, yeah, I guess Trump would win in New York. But that's not <laughs> that's both not possible 
but also it doesn't make any sense because the no affiliation voter is all over the place. They're, they're not all for RFK. Just a ridiculous, it's a ridiculous strategy. But it's it's worth noting that this campaign spokesperson is very directly saying, I want Trump to win. And we all know how that works, right? 270 wins the election. If you don't get to 270, if nobody gets to 270, then Congress picks the president. So who are they gonna pick? Who are they gonna pick? If it's a Republican Congress, they'll pick Trump. So we're rid of Biden either way. Does everybody follow that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I follow, it makes very little sense. <laughs> But then again, I am following it. But it's worth pointing out, Palma is also a local anti-vaccine mandate activist. Kind of tells you why she's so pro-RFK. Why a lot of people working for the campaign are pro-RFK. This is their whole their whole identity is this. But there is some pushback from the Kennedy campaign. Now, you know, we get speculated as to why they're pushing back. I think it's clear. They don't want this to hurt the potential that RFK may have in getting people who don't like Trump. So if people don't like Biden and don't like Trump, but they don't like Trump more, or I should say they hate Trump more, they want to be able to get those voters. But if they hear this, if those voters hear this, they may think, okay, I'm going to waste my vote for a campaign that wants Trump anyways. So uh, Palma confirmed to CNN the, the legitimacy of the video in a statement to CNN. Kennedy campaign spokesperson Stephanie Speer downplayed Palma's role in the campaign and said her comments do not reflect the campaign strategy. Quote, Rita Palma is a ballot access consultant responsible for scheduling volunteer shifts for her upcoming signature collection drive in the Empire State. She is not involved in electoral strategy nationally or in New York. This was not a campaign event. Palma was speaking as a private citizen, and her statements in no way reflect the strategy of the Kennedy campaign, which is to win the White House with votes from former Trump and Biden supporters alike. So th th this, this, you know, it's weird to say. But Rita Palma is actually more rational than, than uh, Stephanie Speer it, it here. Because Stephanie Speer is pretending that Kennedy can become president by getting <laughs> both, both votes. Kennedy, RFK is not going to win. Not because, again, not because it's RFK, but because he's an independent running in a system that is first past the post and electoral college. That is why he's not going to win as an independent. It's because he is neither a Republican or a Democrat. That is why he can't win. So you could argue here that Rita Palma is actually the more rational of the two because she recognized that RFK can't win. But, but to refute what uh, Stephanie Spear here is saying, Palma is listed as the point of contact for multiple petition training events on the Kennedy campaign website featuring her official Kennedy campaign email address. If Rita Palma was a nobody, just a, oh, some ballot access consultant, she wouldn't have an official Kennedy campaign email address. So this is somebody who works for RFK Jr., clearly. Now, from uh, Politico here, Spear said Palma was never a staffer with the campaign, only a consultant. As I said, that was against what Palma was saying. But in the video, Palma said the campaign had hired her. Quote, I got a call from the campaign and they were going to hire me as their New York state director. And I said, okay, I want to take the job, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is part of my messaging, that we want to get rid of Biden in New York state. If I'm allowed to preach that, if I'm allowed to get that message out there, then I will definitely work for the campaign. And my boss said, okay. I believe her. She wouldn't have an email address of the from the campaign otherwise. <laughs> so <laughs> this is... Look, maybe they didn't tell her, hey, sure, you can work towards this, but don't tell people that in a public event where they can record you. But sure, work towards that without being open about it. And maybe she didn't realize that. <laughs> but clearly that is, uh, you know, the, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is really going to hurt the RFK campaign because I don't know how how much support they were getting otherwise look i know he's polling around 12 percent nationally but he's polling from both sides like there is in this video rita you know discusses how rfk is polling more from biden but there is polling showing he's polling more from trump so it's i think it's a toss-up i think he's he's kind of polling from both and 
it doesn't really swing, you know, in either direction strongly. But uh, to show you, this isn't what Rita said there in that video isn't really any different than how RFK has been positioning himself with Biden and Trump. RFK Jr., this is just last week, said that Biden is more of a threat to democracy than Trump, the guy who tried to overthrow an election. And, and <laughs> the reason the reason he said this to is also insane, completely insane. So uh, Kennedy admitted, uh, so this is during a CNN interview, uh, that Trump tried to overthrow the election four years ago, and he said it's, it's appalling uh, that he could not defend it. But he argued, RFK argued, that's nothing compared to Instagram suspending his account in 2021 for spreading conspiracy theories about the COVID vaccines, which, you know, of course, Vanity Fair is, is writing this part out. But I watched the interview. This is what he argued, that Biden used his power to to pressure Instagram to ban him from uh, from the uh, the platform. And because of that, that is worse somehow than a president trying to overturn an election. The banning of the RFK account, which Biden, by the way, didn't. The White House did not tell Instagram to to uh, ban RFK. They, they did suggest that, hey, these social media account or, or platforms should try to root out disinformation. Well, you know, lies about COVID vaccines, but they didn't go to uh, Instagram and say, hey, ban RFK right now like that. that <laughs> and, and by the way, let's say they did. Let's say they did. Would that be worse? than a president trying to overturn an election in multiple ways and then launching or helping to launch an insurrection at the Capitol? Would the banning of RFK's account on Instagram be worse than that? I don't, I hope, I hope you would agree that that's ridiculous. But this is what RFK was trying to argue. Quote, the question was, who was wor a worse threat to democracy? And what I would say is, I'm not going to answer that question Yet he goes on to answer it, saying, but I can't argue <laughs> that President Biden is because the First Amendment. So I, I, I'm not going to answer that question. But here I am answering the question, <laughs> saying that Biden is because Instagram banned me because Joe Biden told them to. C complete nut job. So to end on here, this is um, uh, Rana Epting, executive director of Move On, who have been they have been very uh, aware of what the RFK campaign has been trying to do even before this, saying, quote, we're going to let folks know he can't win, but he can help Trump win. We're going to let folks know that he said he supported abortion bans. We're, we're going to let folks know that his vice presidential pick, uh, Nicole Sh uh, Shanahan, an attorney, calls IVF one of the biggest lies. And we're going to let folks know that his dark money super PAC is being funded by Trump donors. All of that is true. And, the, you know, it's also worth noting just this this idea that their strategy here at least Rita Palm Palma strategy is the blue states getting getting Trump voters to vote for RFK Jr in blue state if that was any kind of worry the democratic camp or, or party would be on that like they would be focused on that the reason why they're focused on swing states and why groups like move on are focused on swing states is because they're afraid of losing you know that 1 or 2% that could go to RFK Jr in a purple state that would otherwise help Trump to win that state. So it, that's why it makes total it makes a lot more sense <laughs> to focus on those swing states and independent voters on those swing states compared to, uh, you know, blue states. It's again, the, the, the whole strategy here, I wouldn't worry about it because it doesn't make any damn sense. But it this video does really showcase what the RFK Jr. campaign is about, or at least how people on the cam campaign feel about Trump versus Biden. They clearly would prefer a Trump victory over Joe Biden.